First Thessalonians chapter 2. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming among you was not useless and fruitless. But though we had already suffered and been outrageously treated at Philippi, as you know, Yet in the strength of God, we summon courage to proclaim to you unfalteringly the good news, the gospel, with earnest contention, much conflict, and great opposition. For our appeal in preaching does not originate from delusion or error or impure purpose or motive, nor in fraud or deceit. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the glad tidings, the gospel, so we speak not to please men, but to please God, who tests our hearts, expecting them to be approved. For as you well know, we never resorted either to words or flattery or to any cloak to conceal greedy motives or pretext for gain, as God is our witness nor did we seek to extract praise and honor and glory from men, either from you or from anyone else. Though we might have asserted our authority, stood on our dignity and claimed honor as apostles, special missionaries of Christ the Messiah. But we behaved gently when we were among you, like a devoted mother nursing and cherishing her own children. So, being thus tenderly and affectionately desirous of you, we continue to share with you not only God's good news, the gospel, but also our own lives as well, for you have become so very dear to us. For you, we call our hard toil and struggles, brethren. We work night and day and ply our trade in order not to be a burden to any of you for our support while we proclaim the glad tidings, the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, yes, and God also, how unworldly and upright and blameless was our behavior toward you believers, who adhered to and trusted in and relied on our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know how, like a father dealing with his children, we used to exhort each of you personally stimulating and encouraging and charging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and the glorious blessedness into which true believers will enter at the Christ's return. And we also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word or mere men, but as what it is truly the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. For you, brethren, became imitators of the assemblies, the churches of God in Christ Jesus, which are in Judea. For you too have suffered the same kind of treatment from your own fellow countrymen as they did who were persecuted at the hands of the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and harassed and drove us out, and continued to make themselves hateful and offensive to God, and to show themselves foes of all men, forbidding and hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles, the nations that may be saved. So as always, they fill up to the brim the measure of their sins. But God's wrath has come upon them at last, completely and forever. But since we were bereft of you, brethren, for a little while in person, of course, not in heart, we endeavored more eagerly and with great longing to see you face to face. Because it was our will to come to you. I mean that I, Paul, again and again wanted to come, but Satan hindered and impeded us. For what is our hope or happiness or our victor's wreath or exultant triumph when we stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? Are not you? For you are indeed our glory and our joy.